Hi, and welcome today uh, looking at the history brush and the history panel. Now once again, a couple things, just a reminder, I like to, on the toolbox, one of the major areas of Photoshop, I like to always compress it here with the top arrow. I'm going to do that. I can move this around where I'd like it. So this is the toolbox. We'll be looking at the history brush. Now the history brush, when you compress this two up, is one, two, three, four, five down. And you can actually tell that it's the history brush because it's a paint brush and there's this circle around it with an arrow insinuating that you're going back in time. Now the other thing that we're going to look at today is the history panel. Now all of the panels, and these are all panels over here on the right, they live in the window menu and so I'm going to come into the window menu this is their home and today we're going to look at just the history panel let's get that out right now there's nothing going on in there because we haven't opened a file so let's go ahead and open a file and you'll want to open a file as well file open is how you open a file remembering shortcuts are to the right now I work on a Mac so just to let you know, this symbol is called the command key. So I'm going to open, you could shortcut it with a command O, or on the PC that's control O. And I'm just going to quickly find a file. This is my friend's birthday, Zach, so we're going to use that image. I'm going to open this up. and that's what you want to do. Open your file. Now just a couple things, just a reminder. Uh, you can always check your image size. How big is your file under the image menu? So I'm going to do that under the image menu. Head to image size and I like to do this just to remember that if you are working in 72 pixels per inch then you are set for the web. Um, in terms of resolution and if you want to make sure that your file is ready for print then this is what you must do to get ready for that. I'm going to uncheck resample image and what this does, look up here what it's going to do, this locks or links your inches to your pixels so that if you change the number of pixels you'll have in one row across the whole way, one row um, if you change this to 300, you're going to add more pixels in one inch and indeed that's going to make less inches in your width. And if that's confusing, go back and review the section on image size and resolution. So I'm going to click OK and now my file is ready for print and so this is what we're going to do. Now I'm going to pull down the history panel so we can see a little bit more and just remember that at the top uh, all of your states are lined up. So the first step we took was opening the file then the next step was changing the image size so that this this file was ready is ready for print. Now up here by default Photoshop will give you your first snapshot uh, your snapshot should be a replication or a thumbnail of your image. If you don't see it in there for any reason, and we can get into that later, but if you don't see that, then make sure that you take a snapshot down here with the camera. The camera is the icon for taking snapshots up at the top. But if you open a file, most likely you should see it there. Now, what we're going to do today is we are going to um, bring out some of the people in here. In fact, we're going to bring out this person and this person in the image. Just we're pretending that maybe we're doing an article on, someone's doing an article about those two people and we indeed want to highlight them. And so we have a snapshot here and this snapshot that indeed was already created is a snapshot of the image when we opened it and also it's a snapshot of the color data and we'll be needing that later. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something simple. We're going to go to our image menu and we're going to look at something called adjustments. Now adjustments will adjust either the color in your image or it, these, uh, all of these here will adjust 
the lightness or darkness. So color or lightness or darkness. And we're going to choose something called hue saturation. Now, hue saturation is really one of my favorite windows. I love it because what it indeed allows you to do is move your hue slider to the left or right, and all of the colors in your image are going to move along the color wheel. These down here are uh, icons that represent your color wheel. And if you notice, the sort of uh, blue, light blue here matches up with sort of another kind of a turquoisey blue that's more green and if you can imagine this is really a wheel it's just laid out as a strip so a few things that happen in here the hue slider if you start to move it is going to move all of your colors in your image around that color wheel so it was once red is now moving and changing to orange and to yellow and then to green and so on so I'm just going to put that back saturation Saturation is the purity of color, and if you move it to the right, it's going to be sort of like you're adding Kool-Aid, so to speak, to your image. That is saturation, and the opposite of saturation will bring you to grayscale. And we'll be using this because what we want to do is maybe focus on a couple people in here and, and focus the attention on them. So this is just one thing we'll look at. Now lastly, you have lightness and darkness, and we're going to leave that alone. Because what that does is just generally brighten every single color dot in the image, and there are better ways to do it than this. So what we'll do here is we're going to just turn the saturation down to something like this. This is called old style. Whenever you turn your saturation down, but you don't turn it down all of the way, this is called uh, old style. And I'm now going to, I think we're pretty good with that, I'm going to click OK. And now we have the image a little bit desaturated. So what we're going to do is take a snapshot of that reality, of that moment in time, and choose the camera at the bottom of your history panel. So I'm taking a snapshot of that. And you'll see up here we have now two snapshots. The first one is of the original color data of the photo, and then the second one is of a desaturated blend of that. Now, um, you can title these snapshots. I'm going to go ahead and do that. How you do is to get right on the text itself of that snapshot and kind of double click. And I'm going to title this Old Style. And when you're finished titling, it's imperative to come right back down to your last state so that you are indeed where you want to be at this point. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to paint back some of the color data where we want to pull these two individuals out and make them push to the foreground. So we're going to focus our attention on them. Now, this is how you do that. We're going to move over now to the history brush. And the history brush aligns with your history panel so that you're able to paint from these snapshots and indeed any of the states that you want to. And this is how you do it. So we've got the history brush chosen right here. And I'm going to come over to the first snapshot that was in, indeed there before. And that's the one that has the color data. And just look at this. You can click in to these little boxes. Now be careful. What you don't want to do is click on the entire snapshot because that indeed will push you back to that state in time in its entirety. And you just want to make sure you stay down here at your last state, but slither into the box. So you can see I just click in the box, but my last state is still uh, highlighted, and that's important. Now, the next thing we're going to do, because when you click on a tool, is to make sure that the second major part of your uh, Photoshop, this is your options bar, is set the way that you want it. Now, a few things I'm looking at, and you can see I'm looking at my brush. I'm making a judgment on the brush, and I'm deciding that that brush is a little bit too small. So you can come up here to your brush section of the options bar and change that. I might make my brush just a little bit bigger in size. Let's do that. 
make it 32 pixels. And the only thing about that when you use the slider in your size is that it's really hard to tell you know, how much bigger you made your brush. So I'm going to give you a shortcut that I use uh, all of the time. And I'm just going to click, click in sort of a benign area over here to get rid of that drop down menu. And just to leave my cursor up here so that you can see it, your brackets next to the letter P. If you look down at your keyboard, look at the letter P. Now, if you uh, keep hitting the right bracket, look at how your brush is, gets bigger. And then if you tap on the left bracket, your brush is, gets indeed smaller. And that is just a really great way to adjust um, the brush. Now, I'm going to come in and just to show you, I've already chosen this as my data. So I'm going to be able to paint back from that point in time. And I'm just going to bring back my friend here. And we're going to just paint over and back. His shirt and we've done his face and you can see that this allows us to highlight this individual and it pushes him out in comparison to everybody else. Okay, so now he's popping out a little bit more. And you could pick someone else. So now he's really standing out. And if you were reading an article in a magazine and it happened to be about this boy, then of course your focal point would be on this subject. Now I'm going to also pull out his grandmother from the image. You can pick any, any uh, subject you want. You just want to make sure that they have a focal point that now that we are now we are looking at them I'm going to make the brush a little bigger with that right bracket to cover more area you can make it smaller when you've got detail and of course we now know how to zoom in so sometimes just a heads up and let's include this boy let's say he's part of it too because I want to show you how you might zoom in don't forget you can just switch tools I'll just come in to the zoom tool, that's the tool that you, you learned last week. Click on the zoom tool and come in and just hold the mouse down on that individual. And again, don't forget that you have the space bar. Now when you zoom in, the space bar instantly gives you another tool called the hand. Just so you know, that's right over here to the left of the zoom tool. But the space bar gives it to you and that allows you to click and drag and move your image around once you've zoomed in. So we're just going to add him just for fun. And so as soon as I'm zoomed in, I go back to the brush I want. That's the history brush. Click on that. Make sure you have that brush. One, two, three, four, five down. And then you can, of course, include his friend as well. And I'm just painting in this section. Now, we're bringing out these people. We're just bringing back, the, back their original color data. And the rest of the image has the old style, which will just push them forward. Now, I'm just going to pretend that I'm doing this and by accident, whoops, you know, I've gone a little bit too far and I've included the background. And let's just pretend I did not want to do that. You know, sometimes when you're painting, you know, you might go outside of something. And in this case, why we don't mind is because if you remember back here in history, let me scroll up, we took a snapshot of the original or of the old style snapshot. And so if you ever paint over an area and you, you make that mistake, that's why you're taking a snapshot of the data that you left this as. And I'm just going to click on old style, just slither into the box, make sure you don't click on the whole snapshot and then you can come back and desaturate these areas you know that you didn't mean to bring out clean that back up now uh, I'm going to zoom out so I'm going to click on the zoom tool and just choose fit screen so we can take 
a look at this. So now we have a few individuals popping out of the image.